I need a doctor to stitch this ASAP. Look at the marks on my upper back. It's spreading and it's getting darker. This is my back a month and a half ago. This is literally mutating. What the fuck is this? If you've ever had this patchy rash on the chest, the back, or the arms that's either pink, dark, or lighter than the rest of your skin, then this video is for you. This is called Tinea Versicolor. Many of you have had it or have it and don't even realize it. We'll talk about what causes it, how to tell, and how to treat it. All things Tinea Versicolor, here we go. Here we go. Tinea Versicolor. First, let's talk about what it can look like because there's a lot of variation here. So first, it can look like pink patchy rashes. It can also look hyperpigmented compared to the rest of your skin, or it can look hypopigmented compared to the rest of the skin. This is caused by a malassezia yeast that lives on our skin. And this is the same yeast that is also the causative organism for dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis around the beard, the eyebrows, and the face. And it's pretty much ubiquitous in the environment, meaning that it's everywhere. And we'll talk about why this is important later. So a lot of people come into the office and they say, well, how did I get it? How do I get rid of it? and how do I never see this happen again? But the thing is, it's in your environment everywhere and it feeds on your own oils, the lipids that your skin produces. And so it lives on your skin, especially in warm and humid climates. It's able to basically proliferate and get worse and worse. Like Dr. Shaw said, this feeds on our oils, which creates this byproduct that inhibits pigment production or like creates a little bit more. It's a very dynamic interplay. But because of that, this becomes much more prominent in the summer and the spring, which is when most people are going to notice it. So you actually probably have this on your skin year round. It's just that when you go out in the sun, since malassezia produces azelaic acid, azelaic acid inhibits pigment production and those areas won't get tan. So a lot of people will notice just white blotches appear on their skin when they go tanning. And that's not because it just appeared, it's just because those areas won't tan. And because the most common presentation is the lighter spots because of that azelaic acid, one of the most confusing clinical situations for patients is they're worried that they have autoimmune pigment loss or vitiligo. Now, the distinction can be subtle, but some of the ways that help us distinguish it are it's hypopigmented, meaning that the fungus or yeast causes less pigment, but not no pigment. Like vitiligo is sharply contrasted with sharp borders. But then another consistent thing that helps us is sometimes that there can be some inducible scale, like a very fine flaky scale on the areas where the yeast live. Whereas for vitiligo, there's really no surface change at all. Now, a lot of people will self-diagnose this at home, but if you come into the office and you see us, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll scrape it with a blade, we'll put it on top of a slide, we'll do what we call a KOH prep, sodium hydroxide, and we look it underneath the microscope and we see what traditionally looks like spaghetti and meatballs underneath the microscope. This is a clinical slam dunk diagnosis of tinea versicolor, and then we can confidently move on to treatment. Now, not every dermatologist is going to scrape it. So don't be concerned if you go to the dermatologist and like, don't scrape your skin. It's not the common or consistent practice because it can be very clear on clinical diagnosis alone. But when we treat this, we're looking at a combination of different topical or for some people, even an oral treatment. Since this is a fungus or yeast, the most effective treatment is going to be antifungals. Now we prefer topical antifungals over oral antifungals at first. Now, sometimes when someone comes in the office, it's so widespread at that point that it's almost impractical to use topical therapy. And then we move right on to oral antifungal medications. So yes, we have prescription ingredients that you can use. Thankfully, over the counter, there are some helpful things. In the US, myconazole is available, myconazole, and this comes in a cream. And then you also have multiple dandruff shampoos that can also be helpful. So here's how you can do it. You take your cream, myconazole here, and you use it twice a day for at least two weeks. It may take longer, but then you also are gonna use your shampoo as a body wash, lather that up throughout this period of time. Now, how do you know it's actually improved or cleared? This is a little bit difficult, because the color is going to take a long time to return. So even if you've gotten rid of the yeast in two weeks to a month, the color might actually take months to completely resolve. And so I use the endpoint of like the scale goes away and it's not expanding. So it's a little tough to tell. But if the scale has gone away, the rash is not expanding, then you switch into your maintenance phase. And that's where I use the shampoo as a body wash to try to prevent it from coming back. I am somebody who's actually prone to tinea versicolor. So I am on this maintenance routine about once a week when I'm doing my dandruff routine where I'm actually treating my dandruff, I take that dandruff shampoo, usually Nizerol, I massage it onto my body, I leave it on for two to three minutes before I wash it off. And that keeps my tinea versicolor 
from coming back. And I cannot stress the pigmentary changes enough. There are so many people who think it has not resolved and they continue to treat it for much longer than they need to, but actually that color will take a long, long time to come back just because it hasn't tanned and the rest of your skin has tanned. Right, and again, if you come to the office, there are other ingredients we'll use. Oral treatments like fluconazole can be extremely effective, especially for the person who has this very widespread refractory version of this condition. Additionally, if your treatments are not responding, it's not getting better, then you should definitely see a dermatologist to help make sure the diagnosis is correct because I talked about vitiligo, there's also pityriasis alba, there's also multiple other conditions that result in hypopigmented patches on the skin that may not be what you're thinking it is. And some of those can actually be much more serious like mycosis fungoides, not to scare anybody because 99% of the time, it's not gonna be anything scary. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not gonna be anything scary. But if it's not resolving with traditional therapy, it's long-term, or it doesn't look like the images that we've shown you, I definitely think it's worth seeing a dermatologist sooner rather than later. And the last thing that I'll mention, which is things you may be doing that could be making this worse. So the first thing is definitely removing your shirt or changing after you go to the gym is helpful because you're not including all those sweat and oils onto the skin so that that malassezia can be having a feast fest. And the second thing that you can be doing is olive oil. So olive oil is essentially a Petri dish for malassezia yeast. This is why it makes dandruff worse. This is why it makes seborrheic dermatitis worse. This is why it makes tinea versicolor worse. So if you're using olive oil as a moisturizer, it's actually gonna feed this yeast and make it worse. So please stop. <laughs> please stop. Olive oil as a solo ingredient has really no utility and no place on your skin for multiple reasons. Pro-inflammatory does not help the skin barrier. It is literally the food for this yeast. So pure olive oil is out. Now, if you're in the maintenance phase, like we said, shampoo your body once a week with an anti-dandruff shampoo. For me, that's kept it away for years now. I have it currently, like right now, as we speak, it just doesn't bother me. And so like, this is not something you just have to treat. You can't see it because it's in a sensitive location, so it doesn't really matter. But if you decide to treat it, now you're armed and equipped with what it is, why it is, and what to do if you have it. And people will say, is it contagious? Well, the thing is that me being in touch with him, I may transfer that malassezia yeast to me, but it's not like my body will react to it the same way his body will react to it. So it's not contagious in the sense of like, if I touch him, I'll definitely get it. Right. Because I already have it on my skin right now. You all do. <laughs> to some degree, you all have it on your skin at this very moment. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Let us know what you want us to talk about next time. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This is the time of the year for 10 Hit Versicolor, so hopefully this helps at least one person get some sleep at night. All right, we appreciate you. Thank you as always. See you in the next video.